Welcome back. So my next guest, Kim, is the Grammy-nominated R&B star behind some of the music's most iconic and romantic love songs. He's been called one of the 21st century's most vibrant and vital voices in R&B and soul music, headlining sold-out shows around the world. Now, though, the father of five is really holding nothing back in his raw and revealing new memoir. It's called Share My Life, A Journey of Love, Faith, and Redemption. It is out today. It is amazing. Um, I'm gonna tell you, it's one of the, the books I tell people, everybody's got a story, let's talk about it. He talks about it. Kim shares candid confessions from his often painful journey from homelessness and drug addiction to his remarkable rise to the top of the charts. Tam fan, please welcome four-time Grammy nominee Cam to the Someone is remarkable when they can wear all white and it stays pristine. <laughs> Sir, you look incredible. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. You're on tour right now with one of my friends, Lettuce Scene, Lettuce Music Scene. Soul yeah, Child, yeah, yeah, the Soul yeah. to Soul Tour. Yeah. I was on social media just having envy of everybody's life. Everyone's posting the videos from the show, yeah. going crazy. How fun is it? It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible to have a job that I love. <laughs> right, you know right, what I'm saying? right. Uh, and being out on tour with, uh, with Music Soul Child and Lettucey, they're my friends. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really, really having a good time. It looks like it, and the audience is loving it. And what perfect timing for this memoir to come out. Uh, it is, it's so real and raw. You've said it's the most transformative uh, part of your journey, most revealing yeah. part of your journey so far. Yeah, people who have followed my career and uh, and it's been it's been 20 years since I signed the Motown, right? So people who have followed, yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I have I have always talked about my story yeah. from the stage, um, but my book was the perfect vehicle mm. to expound on stories. Look, I've had I've I've experienced tremendous healing and transformation in my life because somebody shared their story with me. Yes. You know, you know yeah. one, there's, to your point, you've shared a lot about your life, including the fact that you were 35 when you yeah. got your big break. There you 35. Go. There you so go. a lot of people would believe, wait a minute, that late in life, it's never going to happen. Right. Or you might believe, oh, maybe as Jane said, the luck is not on my side. Right. You never gave up. But I, I love the start of the book and how you take us to really the beginning um, of your life. And one of those big moments for you, you talk about your childhood, age 12, when you discovered that the man that you'd grown up thinking was your dad, look at that cute little boy, <laughs> that you learned that the man who raised you was not your biological father. Right. And you wrote that you stumbled across your birth certificate in yeah. his desk, and you saw your last names didn't match. You were just 12, and, and you yeah. write in the book, you said, I decided the only course of action was to take no action. The only solution was silence. I kept it buried inside and covered with shame because I reason rightly, the secrecy surrounding my birth was the result of shame. Yeah. You were 12. You know, in the book I talk about the shame that I experienced as a kid. I talk about the silence that was in our family dynamic. And, the Af and I know it's not particular to the, specific to the African American community, but we don't, you know, this is grown folks business. Yeah, yeah. You know, go, go in the other room and let the grown folks talk about this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so there were secrets inside, inside secrets, yeah. you know? And when you're living in the midst of volatility in the relationships in the home and as a kid and not knowing how, and not having the coping skills yeah. to communicate, right? And we stay quiet. Don't rock the boat, man. And that's you know? a lot. And for and a in, in turn, you know, in turn, we didn't talk. I didn't talk about that. We didn't have conversations about that until I was until I was grown. Your mom, yeah. Liz, is here. She's yeah. been with you, um, and 
you have a beautiful, healthy, loving relationship now, and you talk about the struggling with alcohol, um, watching her, and also then spiraling yourself. Yeah. When you went to your mom and said, I'm gonna write the story, yeah. to your point, a lot of times people say, wait a minute, that's our life, that's our business. Yeah. But she was here for you to share this story. Oh, absolutely, her. we've done the work. Yeah. Right, so we're on the other side, yeah. right? We've, 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 we've done the work, right? We've done the work, yeah. yeah. In the book, you talk about you were 19, your dad kicked you out of the house, and you started to live in a crawl space at a friend's house. We have audio of you describing that and, and using alcohol to mask that pain that you'd been keeping right. silent. Let's play it. I downed the whiskey in no time and headed for the crawl space. My small frame adjusted to the tight quarters. The booze flooded me with warmth. I had to rearrange some boxes to squeeze into the space. My brain was barely functioning. That was my aim. Quiet, the confusion in my head. Descend into darkness, numb out. Get through the night so the next day I could find something. Beer, wine, weed, to beat back the monotony of doing nothing and going nowhere. Hmm. You talk about by 22 years old, you were homeless, sleeping yeah. in public parks. You were forced to find food in trash cans. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to this Grammy-nominated superstar. There you go. And you talk about heart and hustle. It takes heart and it takes some kind of belief in oneself, but it also takes other people betting on you. And yeah. you said you were at the Salvation Army in Detroit. A stranger was there. You write about it in the book. And that person said the words that changed you forever. He said, go to a meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the book I talk about the, one of the most transformational moments in my life when I was sleeping outside, eating out of trash cans, <laughs> on the Detroit River, July 23rd of 1990, which is also my biological birthday, yeah. wondering what happened to my life, mm. right? And I didn't, you know, people, people talk about my story being one from, from rags to riches, but it's not that. It's, it's the story of the prodigal son, because we had, my parents were college educated. We had two cars in the garage. We lived in the suburbs, right? I was, I was afforded the opportunity to go to school and do the things that we want for our children. So I'm, but, but I'm sitting here on the riverfront wondering what happened to my life. You know, there's an adage that I love that says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Oh, yes. So come on up. <clears throat> and I, I, I came to a place where I stopped considering the idea that I was capable of solving my problem on my own. Mm. And I surrendered and I asked for help. And this guy, and I was, I went into this treatment center and this guy, Ronald Clowney was, you know, he had all this positive stuff to say. He was getting his life back together. He was, he was fly, he had on, you know, and I, and I was jealous. I was jealous of him, you know, and I asked him what he was doing with his life. What was causing him to, to, to renew himself. And, and he shared some information with me that, 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 that changed my life. And years later, 20 years, 20, 25, 26 years later, he sees me now on, you know, he saw me on, on, on Facebook and he knew that I was, you know, I'm, I'm chemistry, baby. He knew, <laughs> you know, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows I'm signed to the yeah. Motown label and he's a fan, but he never knew that the conversation that I had with mm. him changed, changed your my life. life. Change your life, wow. And I was able to connect with him and, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. It's the strangers that yeah, yeah, in your yeah. life. When we come back, more on how Kim got that big musical break. And coming up, I'm gonna get him to weigh in on this debate. Sean Diddy Combs went viral recently because he said R&B is dead. Well, one of the kings of R&B is here. We're gonna get his thoughts on that after the break. <laughs> Nominated R&B superstar Cam, whose beautiful new memoir is one I'm telling you, gotta read. It's called Share My Life. He lays his soul bare to his fans about the journey. You talk about a journey of love, faith, and redemption. You found love, and yeah. you talk about it. 2016, your wife, Erica. Y'all yeah. have a blended family. Six kids. Six. 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 I'm around off it. 
Christopher is six, Trinity is three, Israel one, Troy 28, Layla 12. It's, look at this. That is yeah. the most, what is, I mean, knowing and going back to that story, Kim, of this little boy finding his birth certificate. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna cry. And holding that. And now you're a man holding your family yeah. together and they're yeah. seeing you who you are now. Yeah. What is that like? It has been, it has, it has been an incredible journey. Yeah. You know, and, and even though I talk about the trauma of my life and growing up, my parents are the seeds. Yeah. Right? You all are the, oh you, are the you are the foundation. You know, my parents are the foundation for the man, yeah. for the man that I am today. So, How do you describe so. the man you are today? Um, faithful. Yeah. Uh, prosperous. Yeah. Uh, spiritual, mm -hmm. um, reliable, ah. dependable, yes. trustworthy. I love it. <laughs> Keep me going. Keep me going. I love it. Oh, my God. You know? Yeah. You know, uh, I was saying you had Chemistry, Album 2, and Intimacy, Album 3, all yeah. went gold, selling millions of copies, yeah. creating a, your own space, your own lane. So our dear friend, Love, Sean Combs, yeah. stuck his foot in his mouth, I think you might say. He said R&B was dead, but then he later corrected and he said, I didn't mean R&B is dead. He wants R&B to get the love it deserves. Yeah. And he was igniting a conversation, which I believe should be had because I think sometimes people forget yeah. um, until they go to your concert and they see thousands of people packed in. Absolutely. What, how do you describe the state of R&B right now? If you want some good R&B, come see your boy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got it. anybody, anybody that's looking for R&B, come holler at your boy. I got you. Yes. <laughs> come holler at your boy. Listen, <laughs> you're such an elegant man, and that was yeah. not the answer yeah, you know, that I thought, but it's the perfect answer. That's why right? we love you. You are so authentic in yeah. the music. Do you? I, I know people have asked you this before, but I, I just want to ask it anyway. Do you listen to your own music? So when I was cooking last night, and yeah. there I am with my son Moses, and we're just in our whole chemistry. We're, you know, part of the family. Um, do you listen to your own music? I listen to it when I'm working. When I'm working on it, if I, if I just finished an album, you know, and the mix is done and it's been mastered, I'll, 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 I'll listen to it. But so after... basically, we all listen to it enough for you so you don't have to listen yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs>